Thrain. Um, Thrain chose, you, know, you may have a seat, thank you so much. Um, I don't like pink, so my son told my wife that I would never wear pink. I hate pink. But um, it's good to listen to the younger generation. My son's five years old, and they see things totally different from the way we see it. And I think this whole uh, journey with COVID has opened up our eyes to looking at life differently. And uh, as I said last week, I pray that you would be aware that we need to see things differently. And so today, I want to just share with you in brief, hopefully not too short and hopefully not too long, but powerfully that it would touch your life. Last year, we, uh, last year, last week, felt like last year, um, so much goes on in the week, we spoke about the rock Jesus. But today, I want to talk with you, can someone say become? I want to talk to you about become. And uh, I want to read to you, if you have your Bible with you, it's so important that we become who God's called us to be. And it's so important that we don't become what the world says we must be, but we need, we need to become who Jesus and the Father and the Holy Spirit, according to the Holy Scriptures. These are Holy Scriptures. This is the Word of God. And it comes to us from the Holy Spirit and the Father's heart to formulate our hearts for life on earth. Can I get an amen? And so if you have your Bible with you, always good for Christians to have their Bibles with them. We don't believe in the Quran or uh, those other books. We believe in this book because this book is historically uh, a book that, w that tells us the life about Jesus. And uh, our witness accounts were found around his life. And so uh, Matthew 18, if you have it there, I want to read it. Just four short scriptures, and then I want to break it down with you this morning. Short, uh, four short scriptures. It says, at the time, the disciples came to Jesus saying, listen to the question, and I'm going to link it to COVID. Who then is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? Who then is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? Now listen to the question. The question doesn't say, Jesus, are you the greatest? It does not say, is the Father the greatest? It does not say, uh, is Moses the greatest? Is anyone involved except us greater? They say, who? Who? They ought to know who the greatest is, but they don't ask that and they don't even answer that because I'll tell you what's lying behind the question. The question behind what they're asking is, Jesus, are we the greatest? Jesus, are we the most powerful? Are we the strongest? Are we the coolest? Uh, you know, in this time of chaos, uh, we asking God, are we the ones you're going to use. Are we the ones? And I do believe that, but you need to have the right heart. You see, the way Jesus answers them is they're coming about the question with the wrong heart and motive. Their motive was power. Their motive was control. Their motive was to uh, take over and, and be the rock stars of their generation, the pop stars, the rappers, the movie stars, the cool dudes, the in crowd, the best of the best is what they were saying. And I love the answer that Jesus gives him because he says there is a way towards doing this. But the way we're going to get to this is not the way that you think. I'm going to show you how to be great. I'm going to show you how to be amazing. Let's clap hands for this awesome family. Great to have you guys with us in church, man. I haven't, you know, my family's just released me after 178 days. I just love seeing people. So when I see them, like, you know, I get all happy. If I had a tail, it would wag, and I'm excited, and it's cool. We're back in a building. We're doing stuff for good. But anyway, this is not just church. This is part of church. Okay, here we go. It says, then Jesus called a little child to him and set him in the midst of them. What a weird thing to do, right? After a question like that around power and things like that. And he, gets, he calls a child. He says, he calls a child to him and sets him in the midst of them and said, assuredly, I say to you, unless you are converted. What is Jesus saying? He's talking about becoming like a child. Your heart needs to become like a child. He says, unless it's converted, unless it's changed. And obviously he's talking about being born again, but there's more to this going on because he's addressing their question. Their question is, are we going to be the guys in control? You know this, I, I'm going to keep linking it to COVID because, you know, the church is going, but God, where are you? God, wh whatever. And, and, and God, can we be the greatest? God, could we be the coolest? And do we, can we control this situation? 
And he says, unless you convert and become as little children, you will by no means enter the kingdom of heaven. So obviously, Dobbs, do you have something like a cell phone or something I just want to put on my notes? Uh, yeah. Thank you. There we go. Thank you, Fatima. Give Fatima a hand, ladies and gentlemen. It was a very professional thing she did. Do you see how well she did that? Listen, if anyone phones, I'll just tell them you're over there. Is that, is that okay? Okay, cool. So, and then he says, um, you cannot enter the kingdom of heaven unless you become like a little child. He says, therefore, and watch what he's doing. Therefore, whoever humbles himself, he's linking becoming like a child to humility. Because their question was, who is the greatest? Are we going to be the greatest? Are we the coolest? Are we the guys that everybody wants to run and look at? And then he says, whoever humbles himself as this little child is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. Whoever receives one of these little, ch a little child like this in my name receives me. What a great answer to people wanting power. What a great answer Jesus gives, even to us in a COVID scenario where we're going, Jesus, so we are looking all over the world, we're hearing about the president in America, we're looking at stuff in Europe and stuff in Africa, here in South Africa and stuff in South America, and God, what's going to happen? Are we going to be the greatest? Jesus says, sure, of course you're going to be the greatest, but it's your heart that's going to count. It's not that you are going to be great in the way that the world is great, not like the president of the states or um, rich people or powerful people. No, 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 no. You are not going to operate like that. The way I want you to work is totally different. And he uses the example of a child. Here's a couple of things we can learn. So the context here obviously is children. And the question I already shared with you is all around power. And, and it's kind of a controlling question. Because if I'm going to be the greatest, then I get to be the person that controls everything that happens. I get to say what's good. I get to say what's not good. Everybody's going to look at me and follow me. Remember Madagascar? King Louis? Who, yeah, thank you. Who, who laughed? Was it you? You saw it. What's that? Is it King Louis, hey? Yeah. But, he, but besides, I like to move it, move it. He also, one of his favorite sayings is, look at me, look at me, everybody. I'm so glad you are here. I'm doing it. I, don't, I can't talk like him properly, but, but the whole point is that's what we want to be. We want to be the cool dudes. We, when we serve in the church, everyone must look at us, and we're the greatest, and we've got the power, and da-da-da-da-da. And Jesus says, no, it's not how you're going to do it. Here's a couple of things to think about, your brain, to pray about, and to practice. Here it is. Jesus calls a little one a child, and the child comes to Jesus. Here's the first thing that he does. The, then Jesus called a little child to him and set him in the midst of them. First thing you and I need to learn is if we want to become great in the kingdom of God, we need to become like that child. When Jesus called, he came. Not when you decide, I'm going to tell God what he needs to do. When God tells you, you obey like a child and you go. Can you imagine how difficult it must have been uh, for that little child? There were big men, great leaders sitting there, the, the disciples and Jesus, and I'm sure some rabbis and some great people were sitting there. Can you imagine Jesus calling that little one? What did that child feel? He might have been embarrassed. He might have been fearful, but he kept his eyes on Jesus, and he walks and sits in the midst of Jesus. Here's the point for you and me. When Jesus calls you, when you pray, when you read your Bible, and he tells you to do something, are you humble enough to just do what Jesus says? That's how you become great in the kingdom of God. It's not about, uh, you know, uh, you working out this elaborate plan. It's simply obeying Jesus. One of the reasons we are Christian and we follow God is we want to obey God. We want to do what he asks it's not just about coming to church. And I said this last week, if you watch that message, this is the greatest time to practice what you've been learning in the church. Many people think this is church. This is a part of church. This is the place where you learn and you grow. But guess where you get to live church is in your life, in your family, in your home. And the point is you've got to obey God through a living relationship. Second thing I want to share with you this morning. Someone say amen. 
And, and by the way, I want to tell you, Jesus is talking every day. Some people say, oh, you know, I wish I could hear Jesus. Uh, let me tell you, the conversation that Jesus is having with you will not progress until you do whatever last he asked you to do. And he's waiting for you to obey. The conversation will not move on until you decide to do what God has asked you to do. It might be 10 years ago. God might have said to you, start something for me. Do this for me. And you're praying all these other prayers. And God says, well, if this is a relationship where you obey and I give instruction, you're my follower and you want to be great in the kingdom, why don't you do what I've asked you to do? You're praying about stuff that doesn't matter. When are you going to do what I've asked you to do? We go, you know, God, I know you asked me to do that, but I don't want to do that. I want to do that. I want to be the greatest. See, this is where my heart is. I want to be on TV. Whatever. I don't know. Whatever your dream is. Nothing wrong with dreams. I believe God can give you the desires of your heart, but it starts with a different place. It starts in a place where your heart says, I'm here to serve. I'm here to obey you. I'm here to do what you want me to do, God. And, and we'll get there. But I'm not about this right now. I'm about this right now. And when you speak, I do. When you ask, I move. Can I get an amen? amen. All those people at the back, I just wanted to say that. I haven't said that in like 178 days. I see you at the back. I just wanted to say that too. But I believe it. It's going to happen. Amen. amen. So second thing. Then Jesus, we read this in the verse, verses 2. He set the child in their midst. Are you humble enough for God to call you and then you do what he says, that God would then use you as an example to point and show others, look at what this person is doing. See, that child was humble enough to sit, not to do what he wanted, to listen to Jesus. And then Jesus says, look at this little guy. See his life? I want you to practice this. Are you humble enough to be used by God that he can set you in the midst of wherever you are, in the midst of others, maybe at work, in the midst of your family, in the midst of a schooling situation, in the midst of wherever, and he says, now, I want people to look at your life as an example, and I want people to be taught from the way you're obeying me. See, we see that in the word, but we like, he just called him. The child came and he sat and he listened. And then he let Jesus talk about him and say, can you see how he's obeying? Can you see how he's behaving? Can you see how he's moving? Can you see what he's doing? And big people were learning from a little one because the little one was obeying God. And in that moment, in that moment with all those great people there, the disciples, Jesus was saying, this little guy is the greatest. This little guy, because what he's doing now makes him great. In my eyes, his obedience and his subjection to me makes him the greatest out of all you big disciples, out of all of you big preachers, out of all of you big leaders, out of all of you big Christians, out of all of the followers of God. This little humble guy is the greatest because he's humbled himself. Amen. Third thing, one must become like a child. Unless you are converted and become like a child. Now, I want to just talk about this because people don't always get what that means. It doesn't mean becoming childish. I've met many people that are childish. I think asking that question, who is the greatest, was childish. Was childish. Childish is about what I want. When I pray, I'm going to tell God he better do. And, and I'm going to demand and I'm going to twist arms, and I'm going to try and manipulate God, and I'm going to try and manipulate the situation with COVID, and I'm just going to do what I'm going to do. And God will do what He needs to do, and I'm going to trust. But being childlike, let me just run through a couple of things with you, what childlikeness is. Child not, to be childlike, children readily admit that they're weak. Do you know that? Like my five-year-old comes to me when he needs something. He doesn't make a story about it. He says, Dad, I'm hungry. I need food. I'm like, okay, cool. There's food. Dad, I'm thirsty. Okay, yeah, something to drink. Dad, can we go over there? I'd like to go and play. 
And all the time he's expressing his weakness to me. He's not ashamed that he's not as strong as his dad. He's not ashamed that he's, he's this big guy in control of the house. He readily speaks to me and he shows me his need. It's no act. That's what it means to be childlike. One thing is another one. Children trust fully. You see, he doesn't worry about where the next meal's coming from. He knows there's a thing called COVID, but he's not like, you know, I've thought about this and, you know, it's going to change the world. He, I love the way he talks. He just trusts. He says, there will be a day when COVID ends. So he starts his sentences. He says, when COVID ends one day, we will go to the zoo. Do you see? What, I mean, look at the faith in that statement. When COVID ends, I want to go see the sea, he says to me. When COVID ends, he says, we're going to travel to Egypt. Listen to this guy, because he likes the pyramids, you see. He says, when COVID ends, I'm going to go see the pyramids. Amen, cool. So you see, the faith, he trusts fully. There's another thing to be childlike. Children are humble by nature. The question, who is the greatest, was arrogant in nature. Children are joyful. Children are friends with everyone. And here's children depend on their parents fully or their parent. And the message for you and me today, my good friend, my good brother, my good sister, we are in the midst of a pandemic. We're in the midst of chaos. We're in the midst of turmoil. There's one of two ways you can approach the situation. You can approach it with a, a heart that says, I'm going to be the greatest and I'm going to take control of the situation. I'm going to show God. I'm going to show everyone because that's who I am and that's what I deserve. That's one way. You can do that. But there's another way that says, you know what? I don't have all the answers. I don't know how things are going to turn out, but I'm going to trust God because I know He's a good God. And I'm going to serve Him to the best of my ability. And wherever God puts me, I'm going to be a shining example of what God's called me to be in the midst of COVID. I'm going to be like a child, not childish, but childlike. I'm going to believe Him fully. I'm going to trust Him fully. I'm going to go for it. I'm going to be joyful. I'm going to be friends with everyone. I'm going to give it everything. And I'm going to live life to the full, just like a child in the in the in the hands of a living God and I'm going to believe for the best. And I'm going to see the best and I'm not going to demand because I trust his heart and I will see the good day of the Lord. Do you know that this Sunday morning we are talking about that child because of how great he followed Jesus. The greatest in the kingdom are the humblest in the kingdom. You know what I've found with the great saints, when I've come around people that have really journeyed with God, the great saints, the people that have really, they got a deep relationship with God. It's just what I've found. I'm not saying this is for everybody, this is for me. What's stood out for me is there's a beautiful childlike nature to them. They have childlike faith. There's an innocence about them. And they follow God. You know, all hell's breaking loose. And they follow God with a childlikeness. And I want to tell you, it's beautiful. They've got a sense of humor. And there's joy that is unending and deep. And it is astounding to be around people like that. My life has been touched by people like that. And I, I find the more you mature, the more childlike you become in Christ. Not childish but childlike. The greatest in the kingdom or the humblest in the kingdom as the little ones. And receiving a little one, one receives Jesus. Do you know what that says? A child is friends with everyone. He wants to invite all people to his house. My little son wants everyone to come to the house. Doesn't matter who they are. Doesn't matter the color of their skin. Doesn't matter their background or their religion. He wants to be friends with all. And there's a humility there that is disarming. It disarms people. Because we all got these fronts and these shields to protect us from the world. But that innocence touches people's hearts. 
And so today, who's got something today out of the message for you and going forward in this cave? Just put up your hand. Can you cough an amen through your mask? Amen. Oh, Very good. I liked how you did that. Did you enjoy church today? Was it cool? Amen. Who's going to, can I pray with you today? That you would become more childlike. I know, I know. And here's the, here's the, the paradox of the kingdom of God, because it is a paradox. You see, the world comes with guns and politics and numbers and image and look at how great we are. You'll see it now with this election coming up in America. You'll see the billboards and the adverts and the money that's pumped into being great. The most powerful in the kingdom of God seem the weakest to the world, and yet in the eyes of God, they are the most powerful. Let me tell you, the cross of Jesus is exactly that. It looked foolishness to the world. Look at this great king stuck on the cross, crucified. Foolish, weak Jesus. And that was the greatest act that the world had ever seen. And the way that power works in the church and the kingdom of God is totally different from the way that power works in the world. I want to work God's way. I don't want to work the way the world works. I want to work the way He works. I want to forgive. I want to love. I want to sow I want to give away, I want to believe, and I'll see the goodness of God in the midst of darkness, in the midst of difficulty. I'll put my little hand in the big hand of the Father. If you want to join me this morning, would you stand to your feet? And I'd love to pray for you this morning. Father, Thank you that we can come into the church today, Lord, and it is truly symbolic. Although we have thousands of members and the people watching online, there are a few gathered here. Truly, this is a symbolic moment here in this church, as was last week. The church cannot be killed by people not being allowed to go to church. The church cannot be destroyed with power and guns and violence and money and image. The church started over 2,000 years ago with a king born in a manger, a feeding trough meant for animals. Far away from the big city, he had a mother and he had a father whom the world looked at and just thought, shame, is this this great king? how he entered the world. He grew up a young boy being a carpenter. The world did not recognize that he was a king, a king of kings, a lord above lords, a master of masters. And he came and he served. He prayed for the sick and they were healed. He fed the, the hungry. He spoke life to those that had no hope. He let the lame walk the blind see and the deaf hear. This king came and served. With a humble heart, he stepped out of heaven, walked on the earth, not with a horse, but with his own two feet. 